where we are ready to board our train here at Austin, Texas. Uh, it's a sleeper train we're taking. It's going to take about 26 hours to get to Tucson. And this is the main train station for Austin, a major metropolitan city in one of the most economically developed countries in the world. <laughs> this is the station building. It's basically a hut. Uh, there's a vending machine inside, a couple of very creaky metal benches, and a toilet. Uh, I, mean, I guess in the summer, the air conditioning would be nice too, but it's not really needed in mid-April, which is when we're here. So uh, you can see there's a bunch of people behind me on the station. I guess we're going to add a few folks, ourselves included, to the trip. Uh, we have a, an overnight, uh, we, so we get to San Antonio in about three or four hours where we hook up with the other half of our train, which left New Orleans this morning or yesterday. And then we're continuing on to Tucson. So should be a good time. Let's see how this goes. Well, it's about 10 p.m. and we've made it from Austin all the way to San Antonio. We are, I mean, first of all, these American trains are big boys. Double-decker trains, as, as a British person with a small loading gauge, that's incredibly nerdy and exciting for me. Um, so what's happening now is the tr other half of our train because ours goes all the way to LA, but we're only riding it to Tucson. The other half of our train started in New Orleans, as I said already, and it arrives in about half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Then what they do is they uncouple, if I can get out of the way, they uncouple the rear two or three sleeper cars, put those on the back of the New Orleans train that's going to LA at the back and then from there uh, we leave san antonio at about 3 a.m 2 45 3 a.m something like that and uh that means we'll have been here since just before 10. so we'll have been in san antonio for knocking on the door of five hours uh i mean i mean no rush but it's a bit weird how this train just sits for so long we uh We were talking to a gentleman who's riding it all the way to LA and it doesn't get into LA until, well, the, tomorrow, not tomorrow morning, the morning after tomorrow. But it doesn't get into, it gets in at 5.30 a.m. It gets into LA Union at 5.30 a.m. I don't know about you, but LA Union Station isn't a place I necessarily want to be at 5.30 a.m. Anyway, it is what it is, I guess. So far, the experience has been pretty good. We uh, we jumped on the train in Austin, as I said, and we went to, there's a, what do they call it? A, there's a dining, it's not a full, it's not a full, there's a flexible dining car up here somewhere. And uh, the track was a little wobbly side to side, like <laughs> nearly fell over at one point. Um, but we had a full meal, microwave, it wasn't anything special. And then um, from there, we've just sat and read a book in our little sleeper cabin at the back which I'll give you a tour of tomorrow when it's daylight and so far the pace of train travel is very relaxing we've met some characters already I think it's going to be good we're only a couple of hours in but so far so good so we got off to stretch our legs and our train uh, kind of drove off. <laughs> uh, this is supposed to happen. I mean, I think this is the, the one from New Orleans coming in. So ours got out of the way. This one comes in and then they put ours on the back of this one, I think is what's happening. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it was a little unnerving watching our train with, with all of our bags and everything go off. Catherine doesn't, she's over there, Catherine doesn't even have her phone on her. <laughs> We're like, no! <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to take a step back because these trains are so big. So a little update, this is in fact the Sunset Limited from New Orleans. Behind me, just about make out back there, I can't zoom in on the front camera, oh well, there are, they've split our old train in half. So I presume the sleeper cars are going to come, I hope, because they've got all of our stuff on it, they're going to come this way and uh, attach themselves to the back of this one. There's now a lounge car on the train which looks very swanky. And again, I will give you a tour of that in the morning when it is daylight. And uh, yeah, we are stood now on San Antonio. It's 11.30 PM. Having just spoken to half of the train for like an hour on the, on the platform about who knows what. You do meet some people traveling by train, I tell you. It's not like airline travel where everyone's like, I'm doing my thing. I'm going to my place. Like everyone on a train is like, no, I'm just here for a ride. Like, hello, strange person. I'm going to tell you all about my life story. And we just met some 83 year old man from Oldham who's lived in Arizona for his, since 1958 or something. So there you go. Fun times at the San Antonio train station. had a nice breakfast of, I had a breakfast quesadilla, Catherine had some French toast uh, in the dining car which is just behind me over here where this gentleman is headed and as you can see right now I'm in the observation car which is, uh, it's good, yeah, floor ceiling windows, pretty nice. So we're just, we're just trundling through the desert, there really isn't much out there kind of the appeal. Catherine woke up a little bit before I did and she said that we were only, you know, in, in one spot, inches from the border. All right, she said she could literally see the border patrol and, and all that by the side of the train, which was kind of fun. When we get to El Paso in a few hours, apparently you can see the border wall, which I'm looking forward to, so uh, yeah. So far so good. We left San Antonio right on time at 2.45 a.m. Which, we left with a bit of a jolt and then honestly it was fine. Um, not really had much success sleeping on trains before but this one is uh, just sort of trundles, just sort of bobs along, you know. Good time so far. So I guess I'll catch you in a bit when we've got something more interesting to tell you. Toodles. So we are now on what's called a fresh air break. We have made it to Alpine, Texas. There you go. Yes, we are still in Texas, somehow. We're about 300 and something miles from San Antonio here. Properly in the middle of nowhere. We've just been going through literally nothing of desert for hours, it feels like just trundling along at sort of 50 miles an hour as we go. <laughs> Our train though has blocked the level crossing here. And so uh, lots of wires of police car there now, but 
there are cars waiting. <laughs> there was a gentleman on this side of the crossing here who saw us stop and just went, oh, <laughs> turned around and uh, went the other way. So yeah, this is what's called a fresh air break. We're here, for, I think we're about 10 or 15 minutes early. I said this train was gonna be late, but so far so good. And there's something about these little middle of nowhere towns. Like there's some weird like Sergeant Pepper-esque mural on the wall over there. Uh, I'm not gonna go too far from the train because the next one through here going where we're going is Thursday. <laughs> so I'm gonna stay very definitely within range of the train. As you can see, it's all sort of single track and there's not a whole bunch of stuff going on really here to talk about, but so far, I'm really just enjoying the pace of train travel. It's slow. There's, there's definitely lots of characters on board. For, for breakfast this morning, we got seated with a, a couple of folks, one from New Orleans and the other one had come in from Chicago, actually, or just south of Chicago. Uh, one of them's going to New Orleans, the other one is going all the way to LA. Uh, just the stories these people have, like all age ranges, you've got people, I'd say Catherine and I are pretty much the youngest on the train. Uh, lots of folks all the way, I mean there was the 83 year old guy last night, lots of old folks. Uh, it seems to be very popular with the older uh, generations, but I do hope I do hope they continue to invest in this Amtrak thing because the the state of the interiors of these trains is leaves a little bit to be desired there. They're not dirty, but then <laughs> they're definitely not fresh and clean either. You know, it's um I don't know when this car was made, but it feels sort of 30 dare I say 40 years old at this point. It could use some love like our room for example, only has one plug socket in it and it's in the most stupid place where you, you can't really use it without hanging your charger and phone off the wall and stuff. I mean, there's not enough cell service really to do much with anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But, you know, if I was on this thing, if I was on this thing for two or three days, <laughs> that would get pretty annoying. 24 hours of flying, I've got a battery bank, I'll be all right. But the food was, it was all right. I mean, pretty bland I had a quesadilla for breakfast and it was eh it was fine but I do think I do think that we are checking a great American experience box by doing this I feel like not enough people travel by train or have tried doing a long distance train journey like this and it it's just fun <laughs> it's just fun and it, like if you're at an airport yeah, okay, you get where you're going in two, three, four hours, whatever, not an entire day. But there's something to it. I mean, you know, you, you hear it on all these sort of, the videos of, of people waxing lyrical about train rides and all the rest of it, like, oh, train travel, something. It, it is, it's romantic. It's, it's just a, you sit there with your thoughts, looking out at the tumbleweeds and the desert washes, the rivers that have run dry and all the rest of it, and then, you know, mountains in the distance. Big Bend National Park is, about an hour or maybe an hour and a half south due south of this town alpine which is where we were going to go actually we were originally going to drive instead of take the train so we were going to do a 10 hour day in the car yesterday spend today in big bend national park we were going to stay in terra lingua which is just south of here and then we we're going to do another 10 hour day to get to phoenix and fly home and i was just like you know that's a lot of driving in three days let's take the i mean as soon as we found out there was a train i was like let's, let's try it and here we are, so, so far so good, so far so good. Uh, next stop, I think is El Paso in about three hours. Very excited to see the border area. Um, obviously from my position of privilege, of course, it's just a fascinating, a fascinating thing to see. We did just skirt Mexico um, down towards San Antonio, sort of about 5 a.m. this morning. It's now sort of 10.30 in the morning-ish and the sun's starting to warm up and actually right now the temperature's lovely. Mid-April, mid-morning here in Alpine. It's very nice indeed. So, right, I'll wrap this up. I'll wrap my segment up and I will see you probably either with a room tour or in El Paso. Bye.
but this is our room. A tiny, tiny little closet here, which is useful to hang jackets and not much else. It's only about six inches deep. Uh, yes, yeah, so the plug socket. <laughs> Look where they put the plug socket. So I had to dangle my who's it over here and we just charge everything off the battery pack, which works okay, I guess. Um, and this, this bench seat folds right out and completely flat to fill up that gap. Um, and then these, push them up and then pull them down at the same time. And this is where Catherine slept last night up there. And then you have this little fold up seat guy over here. And that's pretty much the room. There isn't an awful lot more to it. You have access to a bathroom somewhere else in the train car, just down the hallway. And if you, like us, are driving that way, this is your primary seat. You're going backwards, and so you have to sit on this little guy to look out the window. And so what we ended up doing was this little room at here was empty. And so we ended up colonizing. <laughs> we ended up colonizing this little room for snacky poos. So I know it doesn't look like much from here, but in the foreground is America. And in the distance, those mountains are Mexico. And in the valley between the two of us, can you see that big, long, sort of straight line? That is the border wall. I mean, I knew it was real, but... Kind of something to see it with your own eyes. Well... We made it to El Paso, Texas. Still in Texas, only just, but we're still here. Uh, the Mexican border is a block or two that way. Unfortunately, you can't see it from this. I'm hesitant to call it a station and more just a slab of tarmac that's been laid next to a railway line. I mean, it's not exactly glamorous. None of, none of these stations have been really. Um, we have a 30 minute stop here. We just had lunch in the dining car. Uh, what did we have? We had burgers, didn't we? It's nice. Um, they weren't bad. Um, certainly better than the rest of the stuff. But we're up the front here and I noticed that the uh, the engine on the front, there's a, there's a pair of them. Uh, they've got General Electric stickers on the front, General Electric stickers on the front. So I assume they're diesel electric locos. I don't know a ton about American uh, traction, but they don't look in the best condition, if I'm honest. You see this big mark here? Where's my hand gone? There, this big mark there. It's like a big bird struggle. It literally looks like one of those clapped out Nissan Altimas that you see going down the freeway and you're like, that shouldn't be on the road. And yet it's at the front of our train. So, you know. Uh, we have probably another what is it one one o'clock now we had a time zone change which caught us out we um we booked lunch for 12 30 and didn't realize that we were crossing the time zone before lunch into from central into mountain and so we had to wait an extra hour for lunch so by the time we got there we were both famished uh, so i was glad the burger was quite good but we've got another um, seven six seven hours because we get off about 8 p.m in tucson tonight so uh, still a fair way to go, but I don't think either of us are... We're not itching to get off the train at this point. We, we've been on it... What's this? Like 18 hours at this point? I'm not, like, done with it, but I'm also... I'll be ready for my bed to be stationary tonight. And we both grabbed a couple of just random naps in our cabin and just, you know, chilled out and... It's quite nice. The, the pace, as I keep saying in all these little clips, is the pacing is nice. You don't feel like you're in a rush to do anything. You think, oh yeah, I can just pinch a 20 minute nap here, why not? It's weird to be in a city after being in the desert for the last few hours though. Like, we've been looking at just nothing. Like, and just mile upon mile of nothing. 
slowly creeping up on the Mexican border as it generally comes north with the Rio Grande. So, next time I talk to you will probably be, where's next? El Paso now. Tucson's like the next major one, I think. There's, there must be another fresh air break between here and there, but I can't remember what it is. So, uh, I'll speak to you then. That's half an hour. So we're looking out here at Mexico. Well, I'm struck by in the restrooms if instantly is the build quality of the building. The type of air conditioning system we have aboard. No smoking on board, please. Right, that there is Mexico. You see this fence in the foreground. This fence down there. That is the border. And over there is Mexico, and over here is the Promised Land. Eh? several bits of abandoned clothing throughout the so. Just approach. at the end of 26 hours on the same train. I've gone a little bit crazy. 26 hours is a long time to be in one little cabin. <laughs> um, experience overall has been adequate. It's probably the fairest way. I'm looking forward to... There we go, coming into Tucson. I am looking forward to a bed that is not moving. Not that I didn't sleep, but I didn't sleep well. We've pinched a few naps throughout the day. But I'm still, <laughs> still tired. You can see that. Um, just moving for this long is, is tiring. Um, the food on this service was fine it was 
Okay, it was cool to eat a three course dinner on a moving train. That is a life box ticked. But the quality of the food was, it was above microwave, but probably airline minus. Good airline minus, how about that? Not great. <laughs> Looking forward to some real food in Tucson. We're gonna get some tacos and stuff tomorrow. We are going to the Titan Missile Museum tomorrow, which should be a lot of fun, about half an hour south of here. And then the Saguaro National Park, because I am obsessed with those cacti for some reason. And then we head to Phoenix in the evening. Um, hopefully that'll be the end of the trip. Renting a car, obviously, to do that. But yeah, this, this Amtrak experience has been like a, a huge box ticked for me. I won't hurry to do another one, but I won't carte blanche refuse to do another one. Because it's, um, I think if we if you can break it up in a certain way, and the timings will work out and all the rest of it. Like, I think it could be quite, quite a fun way to get places. Just with a young kid, yeah, a three-year-old, trying to keep her contained in a train. There's been a family doing a very good job with a five, six-year-old upstairs and his energy, you can just tell, he just wants to run. But I mean, I'm a bit of a slob and my muscles, I feel like I've gone into, uh, what's it called? At atrophy. <laughs> I'm so stiff. Um, I just need to move. I need to move. So maybe I'll walk around the park this evening before we go to bed or something. He's in order. But uh, 26 hours in a single cabin on a single train. It's a very long time. And yeah, not that it's not for me. But as I say, I don't think I will hurry back. I don't wish to give you too much of a downer impression because it's been a lot of fun. I think I'm kind of mired in the in the cabin fever and the tiredness and the stiffness and all, all of those all of those things all at once add up to, to make me just be like I'm ready to get off now, you know. So yeah, see you later. Well we made it. <laughs> Was it ever in doubt? We are in Tucson at last. Just gonna wait for a lift or an Uber to get to our hotel. But uh, it's nice to be out in the fresh air. That was a long time on a train. <sighs> I do like the desert southwest. It's a dry heat, you know.